This is for sure one of the more boring finals. It's not really competitive every single game. Celtics got full control, all of that. But look, man, the crazy finals that I remember, obviously I got to start off with the 2016 Cavs and Warriors, bro, because this was insane, man. We seen Brian come back from a 3-1 lead, and I know this is still bringing up old scars for some of y'all out here, but how could I not bring this up? I'm talking about great finals performances, bro. In game seven, Brian put up 41 11 assists, 8 rebounds, 4 steals, 3 blocks, and Cavs were just dominant all around, bro. They led 31 to 11 after the first quarter. Uh, it was a run. They, they led 31 to 11 after the first quarter, and they ended up winning by 15 points. So that was strike one right there. That was just a dominant performance, uh, one for the ages, man. And I'm glad they gave us something to remember in that NBA Finals. We really literally witnessed history watching Brian come back from 3-1. And I could go on and on about that series and how great it was. But I got to go to San Antonio because them boys was balling against the New Jersey Nets at the time. Man, Tim Duncan, he ate good against the New Jersey Nets, bro. I don't know if you remember, but I'm about to inform you. Tim Duncan had 32 points, 20 rebounds, six assists, seven blocks, and three steals. Tim Duncan was crazy. And then what's insane is game six, he had a similar dominant game because he put up uh, 21 points and 20 rebounds, 10 assists, eight blocks. And that won him that finals MVP. Best believe that. But that was a crazy ass performance. That was a crazy series in 2003 with the Spurs. Timmy D just went off. And, and above all, personally, I think this is why some people say Tim Duncan is, in, is the greatest power forward ever. Um, despite Kevin Garnett being personally who I think has more skill. That's another debate for a different day. Uh, not even more skill, but it's just, I always felt like Kevin Garnett and Tim Duncan were neck and neck. So this performance here in game five and game six, this finals, I should say against the New Jersey Nets just really showed how dominant Tim Duncan was and how great of a player he was. And it woke a lot of people up because people ain't see it coming, but man, that's a hell of a performance. 32 points, 20 rebounds, six assists, seven blocks. And then the capitalized next game, and put up a th another 2020 game with 10 assists and eight blocks? Like, oh, oh, if that ain't David Robinson type of numbers, I don't know what it is, man. Anyway, look, I'm gonna leave y'all with this one because um, there's another performance. It's more recent. And this is why I think we see the unleashed Boston Celtics that we see this year. And I'll touch on the Boston Celtics some more later in the episode because they still got game four to play. And, and I, I think it's, it's, it's a wrap. Anyway, that's the side note. But Steph Curry against the Boston Celtics in game four in 2022, this was insane. Steph erupted for 43 points, 10 rebounds, and four assists while shooting above 50%. And this gave the Warriors a two to two tie. And eventually the Warriors won the next two games in both locations, and that was it. But Steph had complete control over this game. I remember watching, and it was just amazing to watch a guy who's six foot two, six foot one, three, whatever, whatever the hell height he is, watching a point guard control the game in ways that I've only seen small forwards and power forwards do. It was crazy to see someone this small dominate on that level. Um, in ways that we've seen LeBron control the game, not to compare the two, whatever, but in ways we've seen Kobe control the game, in way, ways we've seen KD control the game, Dirk Nowinski, like those guys have a height advantage so they can grab rebounds. But for Steph to be six foot two, put up 43 points, 10 rebounds and four assists, that was just insane. And then we got one of the best trash talking times ever because apparently after game three, when the Celtics won, Steph Curry looked at the bench and he told the Celtics, enjoy y'all last win. And that was it. That was it. That was history right there because the Warriors went on to win three straight after that. And that was it. That was the end of the series, bro. So, I mean, that was a hell of a performance there. Anyway, look, man, there's plenty of more performances that I could have touched on, but I'm not going to keep you all here all day. Maybe one day I will just do an episode like that because, you know, we're about to kind of creep up on that slow section in sports. You know, we're about to creep up on the slow section um, and 
we'll talk about some of the Celtics teams, but th that's why the Celtics are dominant like they are now, because of Steph Curry. Steph Curry unleashed, unleashed the belt on them boys and got the pop, 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 pop. Like, ooh, Steph Curry did them boys wrong, dog. So I think the Celtics didn't like that. That was the end of Ime Udoka as well. And oh yeah, they didn't like that. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, that's why they so focused and locked in right now. Anyway, look, man, hey, shoot me a quick take. 219-413-9405. Leave a quick voicemail message on our voicemail line. And of course, we'll play your take back on our next episode. Um, that number again is 219-413-9405. We got some more stuff coming up, man. News for the run, some NFL news. And then also, too, we got to touch on the Boston Celtics and why everybody is blaming Luka Doncic for the reason that the Mavs are down 0-3. That's just weird. But we'll touch on that in just a second. Anyway, it's halftime. We'll be right back. <laughs> 